truck. Why not just wait seven laps? But, you know, they're going to give up a little track position if they wait because some other guys pitted. So we'll see how this works out. I bet you that the four passes the 59 and gains five points. Wait one bet. Fairly easily, I think, actually. <laughs> we are confused, but we know that. But oh, no, crash. Problem. Shane Meal. Shane Meal having problems. Hank Parker Jr. getting caught up in the number 21. We hear radio communications from his team asking if he has a flat tire. Body, that, body damage. That was Steve Meal. You mentioned Shane's father spotting for him. He looks like the right front tire may be flat. A lot of damage to the left rear corner, as you can see. Well, you know, restarts, cautions, breed cautions. There's Shane right there at the 15 truck. Center of your screen. Let's see what happens when they get down in turn number one here. Shane goes up high. He must have had a flat tire. He bounces off the oh, wall. Man. Hank had nowhere to go. Came along the tie boat. I narrowly avoided that accident with a 30 truck. Shane must have had a flat right front tire when he drove down in turn number one. There just wasn't any way for him to turn the truck or, or he had some stuff on his tires. He didn't get his tires cleaned off. But here at Darlington, that's not usually a problem. 99 slow. Problems with the 99. Clear down. Looks like may, the right front tire, maybe. Will that might have. Oh, and problems too for the 47. We got a spin in turns three and four. The 47 gets spun around. That's Jason Leffler driving that all star Axiom Chevrolet. And it was the right front tire on the 99 truck. Well, this is the caution flag that Steve Park desperately needs. And it's Bobby also, Hamilton that also really like this. It also plays nicely into Bobby Hamilton's sure hands. Where Bobby H Jr. also has an extra set of tires, just like Bobby Sr. And Ted Musgrave had a set of tires, Michael, with only about seven or eight laps on them. So these three drivers may have a bit of an advantage right now. And I think all we've got over oh, about 55 laps to go. I don't know that these other trucks, if Bobby Sr. comes in, I don't know if these other trucks can afford to stay out on the racetrack. They may have to come in and get that last set of tires and hope they get no more caution flags. The motivation is going to be the 10 extra points, the difference between second and first, 10 extra points. That could really loom low. Oh, problems with Dennis, Dennis Setzer. Setzer. Our second place in points gets spun around. The caution comes out for the eighth time. You heard his crew chief. Danny Gill say fire it up now and see let's take a look at see. what happened you see Dennis Setzer right there there's a 43 truck of Josh Richardson comes up on him slows down Dennis maybe gets a little loose there but he still follows him down the back straight away they head down into turn number three Josh pulls up on the inside gets oh. sideways and then as he tries to correct it he catches the left rear corner of Dennis Setzer and turns him around that, that is going to just be such a heartbreak for Dennis Setzer in the point standings. We saw that he was going to be about 30 points behind. You're going to have to go. Un unbelievable turn of events for Dennis Setzer. We thought we would have a good point battle going to Homestead, about 30 points maybe. Right now, if the race were to end, Dennis Setzer would be 80 points behind. And he's just trying to do 83, his. 83, because he knows he, he doesn't have a whole lot of time. He's got a, got two laps to try to get by Casey Kane. Casey was able to hold them off for two laps because Bobby Jr. laid off him on the start. He let him get going, even though it looked like he spun his tires a little bit. So Bobby Jr. maybe try to make something happen right here on the restart. One time, green, white, checkered in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Everyone on their feet for this finish. Casey Kane brings him to the green flag. Green flag. Well, we brought him down slow, Rick. Oh, oh problem. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Hamilton Bobby. Jr. gets spun around. Bobby Hamilton Sr. takes over the oh. juice line and problems behind them. David Rudiman hitting very hard into the side of the 59 of Bobby Hamilton Jr. That means the race is over. We only get to do a green-white checker one time. And I hope Bobby Jr. is okay. That's the worst. Yeah, David Rudiman also a quite, quite hard contact. Bobby with his restart. It looked like maybe Casey Kane was spinning the tires again. You see him see him wiggle a little bit. And Bobby Jr. laid off it for some reason. I don't know if he backed off or maybe he spun the tires. But Bobby Sr. Wow, hard contact from David Ruderman. Remember, David had that hard crash at Atlanta a few weeks ago. But uh, so, so great that the safety devices uh, that NASCAR has implemented does so much for these drivers. Ruderman got out of his truck and into the ambulance on his own power. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Bobby Jr. missed a shift. Looks like he missed a shift, and Bobby Sr. had 
no way to avoid that, but what hard contact again. That's a second hard hit for David Rudiman in the last few weeks. Watch the smoke out of the out of the right left side of this truck. See it right there? Yeah. That's a misshift yeah. or something malfunction in the truck's engine. Yeah, the I drive said, line when he went to shift. I said Atlanta was actually Texas where David Rudiman and Bill Lester made such hard contact with the outside ball. Checkered flag will fly as Casey Kane comes across the start finish line. This wasn't the way he wanted it to end, but it is a win nonetheless in his first ever Craftsman Truck Series start. What a terrific job.